Hello friends, I'm Meghna Thomas and welcome back to our channel Golden Epilets Aviation Pilot Training Academy Your route to the cockpit In my video today, we are going to be discussing about another very important part of your aerodrome lighting service is your taxiway lighting system The purpose of a taxiway lighting is to help ensure that both flight crew and vehicle drivers follow the correct taxiway routings at night and in low visibility and correctly stop as the ATC clearance limits Lighting embedded in the usable surface of a taxiway or marking the edge of available movement areas can be expected to follow the international standards specified in the ICAO SAPs unless information to the contrary is published for a particular airport in the state AIP. Taxiway lighting is designated as either high intensity or low intensity. Lighting provided in support of low visibility operations can normally have the degree of luminance remotely selected to suit environmental conditions. The intensity options are usually set up by the ANSP which will have operational control of the lighting system. The settings can be varied upon the request by the user. The performance specification for high intensity lighting is defined by the need to provide guidance by day in low visibility conditions. The highest intensity settings are normally used in these conditions. Lower intensities are suitable for night operations. Low intensity lighting is provided where operations are carried out at night but not in low visibility conditions and the luminance intensity is normally not adjustable. Let me tell you about the center line and the edge lighting of the taxiways. Airports operating in low visibility have green center line lighting on the principal taxiways and blue edge lighting on the minor taxiways. Where green center lighting is provided, blue taxiway edge lighting may also be provided as additional guidance on sections of a taxiway that are assessed as potentially difficult to negotiate. It should be noted that green taxiway center line lighting may also be installed on a runway just prior to a designated exit way in order to give lead off guidance. The lead on guidance from a designated runway holding points onto the runway center lines may also be provided, but if it is, it will be illuminated only if a specific clearance to enter that runway from that position is current. The edge of aprons, turning and holding areas are usually marked by blue lights. Airports which operate at night but not in low visibility will have either green center line or blue edge lighting or a combination of the two at the discretion of the airport operator. Unless lighting is selectable, then where any part of a taxiway equipped with center line lighting is within the designated ILS sensitive area or close to a runway as to constitute an obstruction for aircraft landing or taking off from that runway, then that part of the center line lighting will be marked with alternating green and yellow lights and the aircraft and vehicles should stop in such areas without obtaining explicit ATC approval. Now we also have taxiway intersection lights. These may be provided at some airports where there are multiple intersecting runways but no taxiway guidance system. They consist of a row of at least three steady yellow lights disposed symmetrically about the taxiway center line and indicate that an aircraft should give way to the crossing traffic unless a specific clearance otherwise had been given by the ATC. So this was all we had about the taxiway lightings. Next time when you go to the airports, make sure that you observe these lights and maybe tell the other passengers about what you see. For more such informative videos and updates, keep following our channel Golden Eplets.